All right, somebody just stuffed an entire PC inside of a graphics card shell, and Apple just ghosted Siri at WWDC. Plus, gamers in China are modding RTX 50 series cards with DIY RAM. Huh? Plus, AMD's Steam Deck chip just got jacked on AI. The tech world's gone full unhinged. You know the drill, let's get into it. All right, guys, don't judge a book by its cover because this graphics card can do a lot more than just crank out some frames. Check this out, this is crazy. This is a custom PC company that put a nook inside of a graphics card. That's right, as you can see here from the photo, the GeForce, very funny, 5027 POS. It packs two times more memory than NVIDIA's RTX 5090. Now this card uh, was created by a company called Cherry Tree. I know these guys very well. Uh, I've actually done several builds in their systems. This is uh, a Cybertruck PC that we got our hands on. I think Cherry Tree only made one of these. Uh, it was a very, very interesting build. And then obviously the Borg Cube. Uh, the cherry tree has come up with as well. They have a few uh, variations and iterations of this. They've done a lot with Star Trek, but this, oh boy, this is crazy. Often the most intriguing hardware modifications are also the strangest. This is cherry tree. They do a lot of unique custom PC cases and things like that. Uh, this is the GeForce 5027 POS. Uh, what a graphics card, my goodness gracious. Uh, there, uh, you know, if you got a damaged graphics card, something's busted, what do you do with it? You, you throw it away, you know, do you do you use it, you put it on display on your shelf, or do you turn it into a fully functional computer? Well, that's what happened here. Now, the card that they used for this, this is a few generations old gigabyte card, as you can tell uh, from the shroud. This thing has been around for a little bit, and it's not like the fastest PC in the world that they built in here. I mean, you're severely limited by room, so that should come at no surprise. This is the Asus Nook 13 Pro. Decent specs. You've got an i7-1360P chip, a Raptor Lake chip in there. 12 cores, 16 threads, boost clock up to 5 gigahertz. Okay, it's got integrated. This is where it, you know, kind of falls behind a little bit. It integrated Iris uh, graphics up to 1.5 gigahertz. Cherry Tree paired the 28-watt Laptor Rake processor with 64 gigs of DDR4 memory. That's not too bad. And a 2 terabyte SSD. You know what? This is actually, uh, this is not terrible specs on a system like this. It's tiny, so you you get what you get, but not too bad. So obviously credit here to Steve from Gamers Nexus. Uh, this is his video kind of breaking it down, but as you can see here, they've got like a couple cool custom touches. You have the cherry tree engraved on there, and then underneath the hood, which is where it gets interesting. You can see Steve's here uh, taking out some of these, uh, these screws, and underneath, you can see the teardown of this card itself the heat sink i don't think doing a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of work here you know you even have this little uh this is kind of ingenious here you have this hardwired uh switch to turn the computer off and on which is kind of fun yeah i mean overall cherry tree did you know quite a bit of uh of engineering to make this work and to make this fit it's kind of fun let me know in the comments i'm curious from you guys if you could disguise your pc in anything what would you pick microwave toaster old xbox let me know down below guys modders are already eyeing ways to upgrade existing 50 series graphics cards using diy three gigabyte models in china check this out yep you heard that right uh china modders they're out here doing open heart surgery on gp use uh, like it's just a weekend project. Look at this. Uh, Samsung GDDR7 3 gigabyte modules now available for DIY purchase in China. So this, the implications here are kind of crazy. Could you? Could we see a modded 48 gigabyte 5090 card? Maybe. Let's read on. It's no secret that NVIDIA is going to expand the use of using GDDR7 memory, featuring those three gigabyte capacities to move more graphics cards. Uh, you've got the 5090 laptop GPU uh, that has that's utilizing this memory right now and the upcoming uh, 5080 Super. We've heard a lot of rumors about that uh, card as well, uh, which would be very, very interesting to see that happen. Uh, so here's kind of the breakdown of what NVIDIA plans to do when it comes to these three gigabyte GDDR7 modules. Uh, the 5090 laptop utilizing them. You've also got these super cards, which we're going to imagine will take advantage of that. Uh, the 5080 Super, a lot of rumors about this right now. It's all but confirmed. 24 gigabytes of VRAM is what we're looking at, uh, which would obviously use those three gigabyte modules. Okay, so how do people mod these cards and upgrade the VRAM? Well, check this out. This is Samsung's new line 
of memory. It's on sale now, and uh, customers apparently need to buy at least five modules to get free shipping. Each module costs around ten dollars us how do we know that this will work on these gpus we'll check this out nvidia teased this memory in an official video the company discussed how they designed the new model and one of the last things they show is a 3d model of the pcb of the 5090 founders edition this memory used for this card is the exact same memory which is three gigabytes in capacity in other words nvidia themselves teased an RTX 5090 with 48 gigs of memory. And now it's happening. You know, it's kind of crazy. These modders aren't just out here flexing. They're basically reverse engineering NVIDIA's next SKU lineup before it even drops. It's kind of cool. You know, and we kind of saw similar behavior back in the 10 series, the GTX 10 series days, when people unlocked extra cores or, you know, flashed BIOS for better performance. History's repeating, uh, but now it involves uh, soldering and heat guns. It's also worth reminding that Nvidia already launched its RTX Pro 6000 Blackwell professional graphics card, which has two-sided memory with, you guessed it, those uh, cute, adorable three gigabyte GDDR7 chips on their capacity per side. So the idea has already been explored on desktop and even released in the market. You know, and this also highlights a bigger issue all around because if uh, GPU memory segmentation is now a feature, not a bug, NVIDIA is literally selling you upgrades that it already designed. <laughs> what era are we living in? This is crazy. So my question for you is this, would you ever risk modding your GPU's VRAM if it meant more performance? Or does that sound like, you know, a thousand dollar paperweight waiting to happen. Let me know down below. Oh, Apple, WWDC 2025 just happened and yet it lacked the one thing that Apple desperately needed. Let's talk about it. Still no AI powered, more personalized Siri from Apple. This is crazy that it has taken them this long and there's, there's still nothing really in the way of AI when it comes to Siri. You know, WWDC, Apple dropped every buzzword imaginable except for one. Siri. Uh, this year's Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple announced a slew of updates to its operating systems, services, and software, including a new look it dubbed Liquid Glass and a rebranded naming convention. But where the hell is, uh, is AI Siri, which was introduced at last year's conference? Uh, Apple's uh, senior vice president of software only gave the Siri update a brief mention, saying, as we've shared, we're continuing to work to deliver features that make Siri more personable. This work needed more time to reach our high quality bar. Boy, time is ticking on this AI stuff though. Siri has, it's funny because Siri has been the punchline of AI jokes for decades. And now it feels like Apple has kind of just walked away from the table on this. You know, Apple, they've already integrated chat GPT, visualization tools, generative um, emojis, but the one assistant that they've had for 10 years is still on vacation. The time frame of coming year seems to indicate that Apple won't have news before 2026. That is huge when it comes to AI. Look at how much ChatGPT has changed just in six months. First announced at Worldwide Developer Conference 2024, the more personalized series expected to bring artificial intelligence updates to the virtual assistant built into the iPhone and other Apple devices. At the time, they said, man, this is our next big thing. Wait till you see what we're doing with Siri and AI. And they pitched it at the time of saying, hey, uh, Siri's gonna be able to understand personal context like relationships, communication, routine, and more, which would actually probably be pretty helpful. In the meantime, to kind of bridge the gap, Apple has partnered with OpenAI, and uh, when users ask Siri's questions that the assistant can't answer, those can be directed to ChatGPT instead. So let's compare this to what's going on at Apple's competitors. You have Google's Gemini, which is getting full device context, and even Samsung is pushing Bixby harder than Apple's pushing Siri. This is just a wild timeline. It's not what you would expect. This feels a lot like Apple is just leaning into third-party AI partnerships instead of rebuilding Siri from scratch, which probably says a lot about their long-term plans. All right, here's my question for you, for all, all my Apple users out there. Do you use Siri 
for anything? Or has it been replaced by ChatGPT, Alexa, or uh, crap, muscle memory at this point? Let me know. Oh boy, it looks like Steam Deck just got a little brother with big AI dreams. Take a look at this, this is pretty cool. AMD's Ryzen Z2 AAP for handhelds confirmed as Earth Plus powered by Zen 2 and RDNA 2. Check this out. AMD Earth, this is also known as Van Gogh. So this is the APU behind Valve Steam Deck handheld. Possibly the most popular non-Nintendo gaming handheld, most certainly. Now this is a big, big update, and I'm gonna tell you why in a second, but let's talk about the technology behind some of this, okay? On the CPU front, the Van Gogh APU is now behind current gaming handhelds, which emerged after the release of the Steam Deck. Users can now find up to 12 Zen 5 cores in the HX370 powered systems and up to eight Zen 5 cores in Ryzen Z2 variants. The Ryzen Z series is what sparked the release of various premium handhelds from companies like Lenovo, Asus, and now MSI. Now this Z2 series is unlike the Z1. Even both are tested, even though both are tested on similar architectures, the Z2 lineup is a mix of various architectures. This weekend, AMD announced an update to the Z2 series in the form of the Ryzen AI Z2 Extreme. It's also worth noting that the engineering board is equipped with Samsung memory, an upgrade over that Steam Deck OLED 6400 mega transfer and the original 5500 mega transfer memory. So faster memory on this. Memory bandwidth is usually the biggest bottleneck for low power APUs with integrated graphics. So even if the CPU GPU architecture doesn't change a whole lot, faster memory means it's, it's gonna be a beast to contend with. It's honestly super cracked. 50 tops of AI in a handheld. We're getting dangerously close to handhelds that think that they're PCs. With Steam opening up Steam OS to you know devices that have the AMD configuration, so you can run it on your ASUS handheld or your MSI Claw, or whatever, you know, even though Valve may not be releasing a new piece of hardware in the coming year, at least on some of these other devices, you can utilize some of this faster technology by installing SteamOS onto the device itself. So it's kind of cool. Here's my question for you, because I'm not like a huge handheld guy. Would you buy a $400 or $500 handheld if it had smarter AI, better battery, and decent 1080p gaming? Or is the price point still too high for casual players? Let me know. All right, that's gonna do it for today. Make sure that you, uh, you like, subscribe, and uh, we have obviously more and more videos coming out. If you wanna keep up with what's going on in the news, make sure that you hit subscribe and, uh, and follow along. We'll see you next time.